Hello, how are we today? Who's ready for day seven? <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Day seven of our Start Finding Success Bread Baking Challenge, my loves. Oh, yeah. All right, so today is all about your questions and answers, okay? So we are going to dive into those in just one second. So I've got one more page to get brought back up here. So give me just one moment, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so much fun. And I hope we have sound. Come on. There we are. La, 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 la. So I got to get my group in. So... This little screen is so small. This is like the tiniest little screen. I've gotten used to the bigger screens now. Bring. All right, y'all. So I am so excited for this. This is going to be just amazing. And yeah, I, I am. I'm just, I'm, I'm excited y'all. So should I, should I, there we go. There we go. There we go. It's going out. Okay. So, and okay. And we've got sound. All right, y'all. So I'm gonna, I've got both my screens up here so that I can screens up here so that mm -hmm. I turn the volume off on that one. Or that's going to be very distracting. <laughs> All right. How are you? Okay. So I want to know if you guys have any questions. And if not, you know what? I already have some in store for you too that I've been hearing from all y'all's from all over the place. Okay. So there's a reason why we're doing this challenge. And that is because there have been so many complications with getting your homemade breads to bake up, especially this winter. Because the weather has been playing havoc, y'all. It's been playing havoc with y'all. And when the weather decides to change and torment you, then honey, 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 guess what? That is when the real interesting stuff starts to begin, okay? So, the cameras are not loving the light in here. So, let's get a little more glowy light like we've got a big old storm going outside so it's like casting this really like blue shadow on me all right so i am still possibly missing something but I'm not sure what that is so i guess we'll just have to go with it all right so i'm going to talk about the top questions i've been hearing from you guys now if you have not already caught our master mine winter problem solving shooting master class that I did up for you guys go check it out because I seriously answer so many of your questions there oh my gosh so many of them and I literally poured my heart and soul into that one just so that I could make sure that I was serving you guys the way that you needed it okay so still drinking my coffee it's been a it's been an insane morning y'all it's been crazy all right, so if you have any questions, please drop them down in the comments. I'm going to do my best to try to keep up on all the different feeds that we have going on here. So we have Facebook, and we're going live out into our group. And in fact, that's what I'm messing because I can't see the comments from my group. So give me half a second. Let me pull them up on here so I can actually... See their questions if they have any coming in while we're live, okay? And remember, if you're catching a replay for this, yes, because there's always a replay, sweet girl. Uh, not sweet girls. I have my children around too much. So there, I, I always post out the replay, y'all. I always do, okay? So please remember that I've got you covered on all of that. Um, so if you have questions, please just drop them down in the comments, even on the replay. And I will be getting right with you guys, okay? I really will. I want to help you start finding success, okay? 
I want to help find you success. And that is what this is all about. Oh, uh, this computer is like dying on me. It's dying. It's dying. Come on, come on, come on. I really need to get a new laptop, y'all. <laughs> I really need to get a new one. Oh my gosh. So, all right. Come on, open. I hate doing this stuff while I'm actually live. I like to try to have it set up before we start the live and it just wasn't working very well. So, okay, so we are, okay, there. Now I've got access to all of the comments coming in. Otherwise, I can't see the comments and I do this all by myself, y'all, so I'm, I, starts making things a little bit interesting it does it does okay so let's see it's been a while since I've done this uh, done it through this feed okay there we go there's my comments okay all right so if you are able to join me live honey that is the best way to get all of your answers questions or your your questions answered because I know y'all have questions and I've got answers for you, honey. I do, I do, I do. I've got answers and oh, this is going to be wonderful and lovely and just oh, so much fun. And this is always so much more fun when you guys are able to actually join me in the lives. Now, I know 11 o'clock a.m. is kind of this awkward time. And I'm sorry. It's literally the only way I could fit all of the lives in uh, across the board. Like, I wanted to do it at a different time, and it just wasn't working. I tried. It didn't work. <laughs> so, we are working with 11 o'clock, because that's when I can actually get in here. All right. So, I want to know what your questions are. What have you been struggling with? If you are baking bread... How long have you been baking bread? How uh, how many times have you tried? Or if you are brand new to it, I would love to know what brought you around to baking homemade breads. So I have my own unique little story. And it's funny how often my story correlates with others. So I started baking bread for financial reasons. Because bread's expensive, okay? And this is not the first time bread has become very expensive. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I started baking bread because it was expensive. I also started baking bread because of my own health conditions that I had. So I was really, really sick and I had to completely change my entire diet. And when I did that, I could no longer eat just normal breads. I had to switch over to a very, very health diet, uh, a healthy diet, I should say which my family hated. Like, I've been deemed a a health nut ever since because, yeah, they they did not enjoy that change. But there, it was a change I made because I had to have it. It wasn't about my family. It was because I had to have it, okay? So, if you are able to join me, I want you to give me a wave. I want you to jump down into the comments and tell me a little bit about yourself. Seriously. I want to talk with y'all, okay? So, I'm doing my best to keep up with all the comments all the way around. All right, so, um, we are, so, yeah, that's where I got started. And then it just kind of, it, it did. Once I finally found that success, and I struggled through to figure it out by myself, because there were so many terms in my old baking books, I literally didn't understand what they were. I'm like... I've never even heard of this word. What the hell does that mean? Like, what is that? And then you get talking with other bakers and like, oh, you've got to proof and this and that. I'm like, what is proofing? <laughs> I didn't know in the very beginning. I'd always just done, okay, so homemade breads was something that we did in our own home as a kid. I was ashamed as an adult that I didn't know how to actually make it. So we had homemade dinner rolls almost every single night at home. 
as a kid growing up. And we did. We, we baked them all up together. So I come from a very big family. So we all had our own jobs when it came to making dinner at night. So if everybody was home, everybody was in the kitchen, and everybody was helping. Because to feed that many mouths, it takes a lot of work. So you were either doing the potatoes, or you were working on the breads, or you were rolling the doughs. Everyone had their own station. My station, when it came to doing our homemade rolls and the bread baking, was literally always forming the, 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 our dinner rolls. That's what my job was, okay? Always. It was always the same job. I don't know why I always had the same job, but that was always the job I ended up with. So all I do is, like, grab a chunk out of our big bowl, and I go through, wrap it up, and then roll it in oil. And set it off to the side to raise and then to bake later on. But I didn't know how to do anything else. And I didn't understand how it all worked. Like, I, you know, basics, you know. I knew basics, but I didn't actually know because I'd never done it. And nobody had ever actually walked me through it. Because I was always nose deep in the dough, dividing it out. <laughs> that was my job. I divided the dough out, <laughs> really. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so I, when I first started, I had so many questions, and I was ashamed to ask anybody. I'm like, you know what? I grew up doing this stuff. I should just be able to figure it out. Come on, man. Come on, man. We can do this, right? Well, after some trial and error, yeah, I was able to. But then it wasn't until years and years later that I was fine. Well, let's see. It took me at least a year year two no two years before I started experimenting with baking my homemade breads so up until that point I was literally baking two batches two separate batches of bread every single time I baked and I bake three times a week because that's how long the bread stores in my cupboards which happens to correlate with how fast my family eats it and that's just because I I bake the right amount of bread for my family and what they will eat. And if so, you know, and you, you're not going to know that until you actually start baking. So if you're, so I, this is a question I do have. Uh, how often do you have to make bread? And it really depends on your own family. And it also depends on how you plan on storing it. So if you are going to be... Excuse me. So if you are going to be baking, um, let's say, our fell-proof bread, if you haven't got our half-wheat, multi-grain, buttermilk, fell-proof bread recipe yet, honey, please go grab it because, oh, it's like heaven. Oh, it's so good. And these are quick recipes that I have available for you guys right now, all right? They're quick yeast recipes, which is something that is unheard of almost practically unheard of okay they don't exist out there so this is amazing this is a beautiful opportunity for y'all it really really is okay so when you uh when you're baking that particular recipe it makes three loaves okay three loaves and uh it, it will store for three to four days in your bread cabin uh, in just your cupboard all right, now if you want your bread to store longer, you got to turn that temp down some, okay? So you can store it in, say, your fridge for up to about 10 days. So somewhere right around that two-week mark. Normally, it's just shy of two weeks. So I always say 10 days, okay? Um, and then if you need longer storage, you can store it in your deep freezer, now, I say deep freeze because it's much, much colder for up to six months. And if you're going to be start, if you're going to start freezing your bread, just make sure that you are wrapping it good and tight. That's going to help hold the moisture that's in the bread in around the bread. So when you take the wrap off it, all that uh, frozen moisture is still going to be with the bread, including the little ice chunkies that are on the outside of your bag, okay? Keep those with your dough when you go to warm it back up, and it's going to help rehydrate it, okay? Um, so, you bake your breads according to how long it stores and how you're storing it, 
and how much a family eats. When you're first starting baking, like I told you the other day, I think it was yesterday, in fact, might be the day before, it might have been in day five of the challenge, not day six, but uh, your, uh, I just lost what I was saying. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, so when you're storing your breads, I lost it. I just totally lost it. It just went. <sighs> the joys, the joys, the joys of live, right? <laughs> yeah. There's something about live that's just different. There's something different. The atmosphere is different. And it's, yeah, it's just different, yeah. Okay. So I told you something about something uh, yesterday. Uh, it might come back to me. Let's just move on. All right, so when you're storing your breads, you need to make sure that you are baking them up for how much your family eats. This is what I was talking about. Okay. So, like I told you the other day, when you are first baking, when you start consistently baking homemade breads, you are going to go through bread like crazy. Okay, it goes like cob butter on toast, okay? All right, so... You're going to have to bake a lot more breads in the very beginning than you will a month after that, okay? So it takes generally about a month before that new homemade bread-like sensation or, oh, you know, uh, a trend kind of goes away inside your own family. So everyone is always going to go for that homemade bread first, and they're just going to be like, Oh my God, Mom, Mom and Dad, they made homemade bread, or, you know, however it is in your particular situation. Like, oh, it's so good, so good. Oh, nothing beats homemade bread, y'all. It doesn't. Nothing beats the love and the comfort that comes from homemade breads. Oh, it's so good. And the beautiful thing with homemade breads, honey, let me tell you something. The beautiful thing with homemade breads is when you are, uh, it, it, it's, it's the experience of the whole thing, okay? So it always brings back this memory to me. And it's not even a real memory for me. Like, I know other people that have this memory, but it was not a memory of my own. But it's something I've always kind of had in the back of my mind, okay? So for me, this is a romanticized memory. For others, no, this was a real thing. Of walking into Grandma's house with that beautiful, comforting, and loving, and peaceful smell of baking bread in the oven. That there is a smell that comes from baking homemade bread that literally just fills your home. And when it, like, almost it's done, it, it's almost done, like, it just turns into this, the smell itself is literally comforting and it makes your mouth start watering. When you smell that golden crust, that's when your bread's done, okay? You can tell when your bread's done simply by using your nose, honey. And that smell is pure peace. It is pure love. It is pure comfort to the soul and the body, okay? Oh, yeah. But that feeling of a kid walking into Grandma's house that is baking homemade bread, and they're going to be hanging out with Grandma, and they walk in and that smell just hits them. And no matter how hard life has been and how bad the day has been and everything that's been going on in their own personal lives, that all just melts away. It's like walking into a room that's been blessed. Like if you've ever gone through like a home that's actually been blessed, when you step in, like all of your own like discomforts and your fears and your insecurities and your worries and everything like that, they literally just like wash away. It's like walking through a fog that just instantly eliminates all of that when you walk in. And the moment you walk out, you start feeling all those negative energies outside of it, okay? It's not like they all just instantly come bam, but you know, you, you can all of a sudden, they, you can all of a sudden feel them again, okay? 
And so when you're walking into grandma's house and that smell hits you and you, you, you've just had a really rough time. Because come on, let's admit it. Growing up is hard. It's hard, okay? Life is incredibly hard for a kid. And I don't care what generation you come from. Life as a kid is hard. Growing up is hard, okay? It's just hard. That's just the way it is. Yeah, it is, okay? So you have that feeling that just hits you and the whole time you're there with grandma and like maybe she like actually let you plunge your hands down into the dough and like helped her fix it like right there side by side with her and not looking up at her, you know, you know, you've plunged your hands into the dough and it just like envelops around your hands. I've told you the story a couple times. All right. Um, but it like envelops around your hands and it's just like, oh, it's like this soft gooey, but it's not gooey. It's just. It, it's just a very unique sensation, especially depending on the type of bread that you're baking. So if you want a really, if you want a bread that's really going to just like envelop around your hand and just like, whoa, <laughs> you, you, you want to make a white bread. But, you know, and just, you, you look up with her, look up at her and she just has this complete, you, you're just so proud and intrigued and amazed by the feeling of doing this and just knowing that she's literally standing side by side with you and looking up and seeing her smiling down at you. Oh, oh. sometimes as a kid, we need those things. We need memories like that. Okay. We do. We need memories like that. And it's, you know, so it's just this beautiful possible memory that a kid could have, or even you could have. And, you know, and then it doesn't end there. So you get that beautiful sensation of the bread actually baking and that smell that just literally fills your heart, your soul, your body, your mind with just pure comfort in that moment. No matter how hard the day has been, no matter what has been going on, everything just feels right in that one moment. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then on top of it, after all the hard work of making it and that beautiful aroma that has now filled the entire home and your heart is just in complete peace for possibly the first time in a long time, okay? And then you get to sit down and enjoy it. Now with the breads that I teach, you can enjoy that in an hour, hour and a half total, okay? So if you want to slice into that bread while it's still hot and steaming, ooh, yeah, you can. Now, I don't advise it. I advise letting it cool down. And that actually leads us into our next question. But let me finish this up really fast. There's a point as to why I'm telling you this. Because there is a possibility that if you don't have a memory like that, of baking with your grandma or your grandpa or even your mom or your dad and you wish that you could give your own children a memory like that you could and if you stick with me I'll show you how to do it because I want you to actually start finding success in baking your homemade breads and it's a beautiful beautiful thing okay so you could actually give your children the chance to have that memory of baking your breads side by side with you and that amazing feeling of comfort and warmth in their heart and in their soul because of the smells and the natural comforting aspect that comes from homemade breads. And just the memories of sitting down and talking with you as they're enjoying their fresh homemade bread that you had just finished baking either by yourself or side by side with them. So that your kids could have at least that one memory that could bring them absolute comfort throughout the rest of their life. How could that change the, the possibilities of how their life could turn out if they had just that one moment of absolute pure peace, comfort, and love? That one moment where there's no fighting, there's no tension, there's everything's just right. 
And it doesn't have to be a long moment either. It could be just that one singular moment. Oh, oh amazing. And you, honey, could take the benefit of knowing that you gave them that memory and you get to share in that memory too as you enjoy that absolute peace and comfort and enjoy the tasty like benefits and the nutritional value and taking back control of your entire life and everything going on by taking that one step of taking the control over the type of breads that you're baking, what goes into them, how it's done, the entire works you can start taking control and start taking back your independence in life through baking homemade breads. It's kind of crazy, huh? It is. It's kind of crazy. All right. So we're going to move on to our next question. And if you guys have questions, please make sure you drop them down below. All right. And I don't remember what my next question was that I just told you I was going to answer. All right. So, um, you know, seriously, y'all, create those, create those memories with your family or your grandkids. So if you're maybe your grandma and grandpa yourself and you could create that memory for them, it, it, it's amazing. All right. So our next question is, why do you not eat bread when it's fresh, fresh out of the oven while it's still hot? Okay, and I also get the question of how do you cut bread that's fresh, hot out of the oven? First, how you cut it is you need to turn your knife, a bread knife, you need a good serrated knife. And the longer the blade, like a bread knife, the better because it gives you a little more control so that your cuts aren't all the way down, okay? So you can... So you turn your bread knife at a 45 degree angle. And yes, you do use your pointer finger, but remember a pointer finger is a for pointing. It's for aiming. It's not for pushing down on the knife. You literally just let the knife do the work, okay? Do not press down, okay? You just let it kind of do its own, own thing. Now, if you have a really light bread knife, then yes, you might want to put just a little bit of pressure on it, but not a whole lot. You basically let the knife just do the work. And you saw. Like, imagine you're like like sawing a log, okay? Like by hand. You have to saw it. It's the sawing motion. The sawing motion that does the work for you, okay? So um, that's how you do it. And you just gently support and hold it over here. So you want to give it just a little squeeze with your other hand just to hold the loaf in its actual form while you are cutting it. And just take it slow, honey. Now the hardest part to cut is gonna be the bottom crust, okay? So when you get down to the bottom crust, you really actually wanna put a little pressure on the very, very tip of that knife and give it a good saw back, a good pull back, and then do that a couple times depending on how hard that bottom crust is. The bottom crust is actually the hardest part to cut and getting it started, okay? Once you have it started, once you have that little groove started into, like, past the crust, it's going to cut like butter. All right. So why do you not store, or why do you not eat bread fresh out of the oven? Because it's a yeast bread. That's why. And yeast is alive, honey. Your bread is literally a living, breathing thing. That yeast is breathing inside your bread. It's breathing life into it. That's what makes it raise up and be all fluffy and beautiful and deliciously, like, soft and, like, delectable when you're eating it, okay? Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> All right, so when you are, <clears throat> okay, sorry, apologies, apologies. <laughs> All right, so when you are baking your homemade breads, that yeast literally is growing inside it, okay? 
and it's expelling gas. This gas is what makes your bread raise, okay? But your yeast is still alive and active when you pull it out of the oven. When you get done baking and you pull it out of the oven, that yeast is actually still alive inside. It's still producing gas. There's two reasons why you do not slice into your bread fresh out of the oven. Yes, technically you can do it, but it's not good for your bread and it's not actually good for your gut, okay? So, if you slice into your bread while it's still hot, it's at your bread on the very, very inside, the dead center of it is literally still baking, okay? It's still baking inside of its hard cocoon of the bread crust itself. So, when you cut into it, that stops that baking process. It releases all the gases, all the moisture, everything out into the air instead of trapping it inside and literally making it soak into the grains of the bread itself, okay? So, when you cut into it, it's going to release all that, which means your bread's not going to store as long, and it's going to dry out faster. Mostly, it's just, it dries out faster, okay? And it's not going to have, it, it just dries out, y'all. It dries out, and then it becomes very, very crumbly while you're, like, uh, within a day, sometimes you can get two days before it's like a crumbly, crumbly, crumbly mess. Now, we're making homemade breads. Honey, homemade breads are going to be more crumbly. That's just the way they are. And it's just because, especially with my recipes, we're not packing so much fat and processed uh, and processed chemicals and everything else into the bread for preserving it. Now, yes, you can, there are a lot of preservers that you can put into bread. Some of them are healthy, most are, and like if the ones from the store, most of those are not a healthy option, okay? Seriously, they're not healthy for you. Um, it causes all sorts of problems, okay? So, that's how it's not good for your bread. It's not good for you because that gas is still alive. It's still growing. The yeast is still alive. It's still producing gases, okay? So when you eat it while well, it's still hot, fresh from the oven, that yeast is going to continue to expel gas inside your stomach. <laughs> okay? That's another reason why my, the way I teach you, I always try to cut the yeast back to the lowest amount to do it in the same amount of time. Now, yes, you can actually cut the yeast back even further than I have, but it's going to increase your prep time. It's going to increase how long it takes. Okay, so Miss Sarah, funny question, too good move. What make you laugh and where are you to? Ticklish. Where am I ticklish? <laughs> Hi, Sarah. How are you? <laughs> All right. I'm glad that you're in a good mood and can make you laugh. <laughs> so what makes me laugh? Um, I laugh about everything. I laugh about life in general. I would rather laugh than sit there and whine and complain about life because that doesn't do any good for anybody. That just makes us all miserable and turns me into... Uh, possibly a, a bad witch. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sarah, you're cute. All right. Um, so, yeah, I, I really, I, I just want to have fun with life. Like, life is already hard as it is. So, let's just have fun with it, right? Instead of whining and complaining about everything that's happening, you know, just laugh. Because it can always get worse. And the moment that you think it can't get worse... Honey, trust me, it's going to get worse, okay? Something's always going to happen. And that's just because we need those troubles in our lives in order to, you know, boop, like make us like pop up and realize how amazing a person you are. Like you need those hard moments. You need like that swift kick in the butt to just go, hey, you've got this. You're like, you, you're smart. You're strong. You're Yet you are capable of doing this and 
you aren't believing in yourself right now. So we're going to change that. Fate is going to change that. Destiny, whatever it is that you believe in, it's going to change it on you. Okay. <laughs> it's going to change it. Okay. So if you guys have questions, I want to remind you, make sure you drop them down in the comments and let's have some fun. Okay. So what are some of the questions that you guys are having with your bread baking? What are some of the problems that you've been coming across? So I'm answering some of the questions that have been pre-submitted to me. And yeah, so if you have questions or you just want to talk, hey, I'm here. I'm here to talk, honey. You got questions, I've got answers. They might not be the right answers, but we've got answers. <laughs> Where am I ticklish? <laughs> I'm actually not really ticklish. I know that might sound funny, but I'm not ticklish. <laughs> um I don't know. I just, I get tickled by life. <laughs> Sarah, you're too funny. Too funny. All right. So the next question that I have seen come up and up and up over and over again is, I think my house is too cold. When do I know my house is too cold to raise my bread on the counter? So you all have seen how many, like depending on how often y'all have joined me in our lives, is like I always suggest proofing it in the oven. Now I'm at high elevation. So one reason why I proof it in my oven is because I've got two little kids at home now. Again, no, laughing at fate, you know, kind of thing at that point, you know, restarting our family years later. <laughs> so I proof it in the oven because little kids cannot resist digging into that raw dough. Now, this kind of ties into our last question of why do you not eat your bread fresh out of the oven? It's the same thing with raw dough. Raw dough is actually not good for you. For one, you've got the yeast that you've added. Second, you've got the raw natural yeast that's in the wheat itself. And two, wheat is actually not good for you until it's been cooked. Okay, but... Kids can't resist raw dough. I even know adults that can't resist raw dough, okay? <laughs> it's a problem, y'all. It's a problem. Um, But it's not good for you, okay? So, and if you want to know more about that, you got to join me in Homemade Breads for the Busy Parent Course. So, and I dive into all of these details further there, too. Okay, so when I... I proof my bread. I proof it in the oven anymore. Now, I didn't always used to do that. I used to proof it up on the counters all the time or on top of my stove uh, while it was pre preheating and all that. And that works really good. So if your house is cold, because it's winter time, y'all, if your house is cold. So if you actually got to put a sweater on, you're going to want to make sure you put your bread in a warm location. Literally do it by how you feel, okay? All right, so you do need your, your the area that you put it in to be either draft-free and a little warmer than the rest of your house. Now, if you do have a draft there, it's okay. As long as your bread is covered so that uh, that breeze isn't drying your dough out, you're going to be okay. As long as it's not like a really cold breeze that comes down on it. Um, so a lot of people I know will actually proof theirs on top of their fireplace. Um, they will, and I've proofed mine on top of my oven and even kicked my oven on so that it could preheat. Some of my ovens have taken a long time in the past to preheat. So I'll kick them on a long time before in those cases. And then you just let the heat that's rising up from the oven and from the vents to raise your dough. Okay. But now with my new oven that I have downstairs, it, it will actually try to bake my bread in my pans if I have it too close to that back vent that's right under your, your display, you know, where you click on all your buttons and all that. Um, and so there's a vent for your oven that comes up right there and it can actually start baking your bread. So if you have that issue like I have, you're going to want to make sure you rotate your breads as much as possible and you want to pull them away from the back of your stove top. All right. Now this works in a beautiful way. Now there's other solutions that you can uh, dig into. Okay. 
So there are dough proofing drawers that you can get. They're kind of expensive, but if this is something that works for you, I'm, I will fully encourage it, okay? So you can do a bread proofing drawer. So they maintain a temperature of, what is it? I want to say 84 degrees, I think is the temperature that they maintain. Don't quote me on that because I don't, it doesn't quite feel right. <laughs> but that's, that's the number that's coming to my head. Um, there are also a lot of new features out there, new tools that we can use as home bakers um, that are really kind of amazing. Okay, so they are options. So you can actually uh, get some warming pads, okay? And these are often used by home bakers. So some of them actually drape over the top of your dough and others you lay underneath your dough. Now the ones that you lay underneath I've seen a lot of folks, when they do these, they actually take a plastic tote, like a clean plastic tote, and they'll flip it upside down and put it over the top so that that heat stays inside around the dough. So, y'all, there's a lot of creative ways to warm your dough up if it's just too cold, okay? And then, the, and then you always have the option of putting in with your oven. Now, everyone swears, like this is the most common advice, Turn the light on in your oven. Yes, this works in some cases, but I will never suggest it. I will never suggest it. All right? Especially, like, cold climate, like where I live. Oh, my gosh, it's so cold around here. Like, we, it's just way cold here. And, you know, that that's okay because this is where we chose to live and we love this. What, this is, Star Valley will always be our home. The Rocky Mountains is, it, it's just our home. All right? It is. <laughs> All right. So, um, when you are diving into your, your proofing, let's see. I always suggest the oven on a pre-proof. Now, if you do not have a pre-proofer on your oven, honey, that's okay. And you don't have to worry about kicking the light on, okay? So, you can also just kick your oven on for no more than 60 seconds. And it doesn't matter what temp you turn it on to. It's just you're warming the oven up. Now, before you put your dough in, it's very important that you check that temp. So you just turn it on for like 60 seconds, no longer, kick it off. And then when you open that door, it should be warm air coming out, but it should never be hot air. So if you have like a natural blast of like hot air come out of your oven as if it was at like full temp, you know, so you open the oven, it's like, you know, sing your eyebrows kind of thing. <laughs> That's way too hot. You can't proof your bread in that. It's just going to bake it, okay? You don't want to start baking your bread when it gets in the oven, okay? So when you are doing all of those fun things, then... You just open the oven. If it is hot coming out, leave your your oven door open for just a little bit. Keep, don't wander off because it's going to cool down very, very quickly. All right. And then you just put it into the, put it in your oven and make sure you've got it either very well misted or covered. I always mist mine because I don't open my oven after I put it, mine in. So I put mine in with a boiling pan of hot water on the bottom and I heavily mist my, my dough so that it doesn't dry out while it's proofing. Now, I have a proof setting on mine, and it will dry your dough out faster, okay? Because it, occasionally it's going to kick back on and release all that hot, you know, burning air up, especially mine, because mine's a gas, okay? So gas is going to dry your, your dough out much faster than, than an electric oven, okay? Um, in that particular case for the proofing. Um, and it's just because you literally have, like, fire. It's literally burning the moisture off in the air, okay? So when you're putting it into the oven, you got to make sure it's well misted. If you are going to be pulling your dough back out again, then make sure it's well covered. Now, if you're in high elevation, I told you this in one of our past trainings, and I think I even touched into this. I did. I did. I touch into this in the master baking class, okay? So, um, when I... 
high elevation, okay, high elevation and the constant changing weather patterns that we live here. So weather can change on a dime here, y'all, which really affects homemade breads, okay? It affects them. So we have to constantly be prepared for the weather to change, the atmosphere outside, the barometric pressures coming in and out of our home and around our home. Those all affect our breads. And here in the high elevation, if you open your oven, if you've got your bread in your bread tins and you're proofing it up for that final bake, if you open your oven to pull the covers off, now I used to do this, y'all, your bread's going to start falling. So you have to be so careful, too, when you have, especially like ceram wrap. Ceram wrap actually will stick to your bread, kind of glues to it. Um, when you're pulling that plastic off, it really, really likes to stick. So you have to be so careful because the plastic itself has actually became the crust, the skin of your dough. And when you pull it off, it starts releasing all the air. Now, on top of it, high elevation, when you open that oven door, you're dramatically changing the atmospheric pressure inside your oven that the bread has been baking to. So all of a sudden, it's, yeah, it, it, it's very hard on your dough, okay? So for those two reasons. And then, let's see. Um, so then we, um, it, yeah, it just causes problems, guys. So if you live in high elevation, you're doing your final proofing, don't cover it. Just don't cover it, okay? Um, now you can cover it and still get your bread to turn out, even in high elevation here. I used to do it for years, but the trick I learned was that when you close your oven, don't immediately turn it back on. Give it another like 10 minutes of raising to recover from removing those covers, okay? Then turn your oven on. So I like to leave my dough in the oven and then I adjust my baking times accordingly. Now it's not gonna change your baking times a whole lot by letting the dough actually start warming up well, your oven is warming up, okay? It doesn't actually change your, your baking times too much. All right, like it's a couple minutes maybe, okay? If even that. Now, you can pull them out of the oven and then kick your oven on to do a preheat as is traditionally taught and is standard practice. But you got to be really careful setting your dough down because if you happen to bump it just right, your dough is going to fall and then you've got to stop and wait for it to completely raise back up. And it's not going to raise back up like normal, okay? Because unless you pull it out of the pan and literally reform it into a loaf and start the whole raising process over again, it's always going to have this weird bubbly flat top as it raises back up. And it's going to raise very, very slowly. It's going to take forever. My grandma used to threaten the kids with, like, death. I'm not joking. Don't you dare run through this house and make my bread fall. Don't you dare, like, make my bread fall. So, yeah, my, my grandma, she was a spitfire. Oh, she was a spitfire. She was a hard, hard working lady. She was a spitfire and she didn't have time to sit there and wait for her dough to raise back up so she could bake it. So yeah, she was a very hard to the point and you didn't cross grandma. You, you just didn't cross grandma or you were going to get beat. <laughs> you did. You just didn't. So the version of my grandma that I grew up with versus the, the version of grandma that my, my mom had grown up with were very, very different. My grandma was a full, hardworking cow woman, and she she did. She managed the family farm, or the family ranch, and took care of all the things. And when my grandpa was gone, uh, so like he, he helped build like the Hoover Dam and all those kind of things. So when grandpa was gone or he was out hunting for the week to bring in the winter meat and stuff, 
you know, that left grandma there to take care of everything. And it, it did. It turned her into a hard worm, uh, into a hard person. But that was life. That was necessity. That was living and, uh, and all the things. But my grandma was also a very kind hearted person. She was amazingly talented. Oh, there, there is, I don't think there's anything my grandma couldn't do. And you know, that was, that was life. That was necessity. And so, yeah, she, she, she is truly an inspiration to me and in inspirations to me in other areas of ways I don't want to go. I love you, grandma. I, and I do miss you. I do miss you, grandma. Um, okay. So let's see. Uh, seriously, guys, if you want some questions answered live, drop them down below. Come on. All right. So. Let me pull up one of my other questions that I had. So I'm trying to like stay on track, okay? Yeah, and we're gonna be finishing up here too because we're getting pretty late. All right, so yeah, we're almost we're almost to the hour, y'all. So this will probably be the last question. And if you guys have questions, make sure you drop them in the replay. Uh, in the replay. And so our last question that we're gonna cover today that has been coming up very often outside of making sure everything is warm enough um, is I'm trying to pick which is the best question because apparently I've been rambling a lot. Um, so uh, I answered that one. All right. So let, let, let's do... Let's do our needing questions. So I have a lot of questions that come up with, oh, I'm just not measuring things right. I'm just not getting an accurate measurement. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm adding too much of this or not enough of that. Or I don't know what I'm doing, but my bread just won't raise. There's a lot of things that can cause your bread not to raise. So I want to encourage you to go back and watch our the, the last two days challenge. Okay, so day five and day six, where we talk about yeast and about proofing. Go check those out. And if you haven't, make sure you check out the master class. Okay, go watch the master class. It's free, guys. It's open to all of you. Okay, all right. I'm sharing this out freely live to everyone. Okay, so you can catch all the replays on our YouTube channel. In fact, you'll find this live Q&A over on the YouTube channel here shortly. And um, you can find a lot, so you can find all the replays inside our our bread group here on Facebook. And now it's for, it's private. So if you wanna get in on our private members bread group, where you can actually pull in on some of the community and you can ask your questions, you can share your wins and we can do all the things. And it's just a little more personal and interactive. It, it's a more personal interactive uh, option for everybody. And so I, I highly encourage you guys to come do that. Um, and it, it's free. It, it, this is a free members only group that I have together for you. There's so many trainings. If you want the best trainings, that's where you want to go. Now, if you want to get in on that, you got to go snag one of our free recipes or get on the wait list for homemade breads for the busy parent. Okay. All the links are available in my bio. Okay. They're all available up there, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that, it's awesome. So you can find all the recipes, all, like you can go shopping in our, our store. You can get recipes. You can sign up for the wait list. You can see, you can get on our newsletter. You can, there's so many things that you guys can do, okay? All right. If you are wanting to switch over to a different social media platform and follow us over there, guess what? We've got those links in there too for you, okay? Okay? So I'm most active here on Facebook and Instagram and I'm not quite as active on TikTok this last little bit. So these live sessions have been a little difficult to put into some little short form posts. So I will get active again on TikTok, y'all. I'll be back active over there. And we are and we're active over on YouTube too. So um 
I do my best to keep up with y'all. I, I do. I do my best to keep up with all of your all y'all's questions and it's great. But before I close, I do want to talk about hold my breads for the busy parent. Okay. I know y'all are probably getting sick of me talking about it. But I'm so excited. I can't help it. I'm just like, oh honey, you remember that story I told you about grandma? Baking with grandma. And that one moment of just pure peace and comfort, that one memory that can inspire and change lives. And in our hardest times, when things are just going haywire, we can fall back on that memory to just bring us a little peace and comfort and remember that there's been happiness in our lives, even when it's insanely hard and difficult. Home by Bridge for the Busy Parent is your choice, is, is your opportunity to actually be able to create that memory with your kids. So this course, yes, it's for busy individuals that are a parent figure. So whether you are mom or you are dad, maybe you're grandma or grandpa, maybe you're the favorite aunt or uncle. Maybe you're the best friend that doesn't have kids, but your best friend does and she brings them over all the time or he does and you just love them and you adore them. This is for individuals that want to be able to bake bread with their kids, with those kids that they want to motivate in life, that they want to give, you know, love and peace and comfort to. To actually give them skills, literally skills, that can create careers in their life. Okay? This is your opportunity to open new doors to them. Baking homemade bread teaches math. It teaches science. It also teaches hard work, patience, scheduling, timing. And it's something that also teaches meditation, peace, problem solving, teaches so many things. And it literally gives you a physical workout. Okay. <laughs> so depending on the type of breads that you're making, making homemade bread by hand can be physically demanding. Okay. Especially a true whole wheat. Yeah. So I dived into that in one of our previous challenge days. So if you want to know more about that, go check out that. Um, go check that out. So I think that was, I think that was actually yesterday's. I think I, I think I touched into that. So whole wheat bread, if you're making whole wheat bread, guys, like a true whole wheat, not, I, I almost want to say whole wheat breads that you buy from the store are imposters because <laughs> they're not. They're just not. They can they they can actually say that because they're literally made with whole grains. Because all your wheat berries are a whole whole wheat berry. That's what they are. Okay. Um. So that's all they can get away with it. But they have so much highly refined processed flour in them, and it's just yeah, it's just a disappointment. But the more you get into those true whole wheat gel, the denser your breads are. But let me tell you something. The denser your bread is, the more flavor-packed punch it is. And the more satisfying. I don't even mean to adjust your taste buds, honey. I mean it right down here in your belly. belly. Like you can have a slice of bread. One slice of bread. And then you're just like, oh. I'm not too good. <laughs> I don't eat no more. Okay? Now, generally, yeah, I, I generally will eat too. But, you know, you can, like, truly be satisfied with your breads. Now, a denser bread will do that. Those soft, fluffy, fluffy, golden, white cloud kind of breads, they're not satisfied. They, they do not satisfy your actual hunger. And they actually will send you crashing afterwards. And it's just because the grains are, the, the flour is so finely milled that your body literally like processes all of those complex sugars and the starches and everything that's in the grains like an instant. So like it just hits you like a, 
and then then you just instantly burn through it. So, ooh, and there's the wind. Poor birdies outside. So we've got like a blizzard happening outside. Like I can hear it. it's like on our roof. <laughs> All right, we gotta wrap this up, y'all. Yeah. So, um, when you are diving into making whole wheat breads, keep that in mind. So if you're gonna be making a true whole wheat bread where it's anywhere between eighty to a hundred percent just straight up whole ground hard wheat a hard red wheat especially it's going to be a dense bread and the denser the bread the harder the need especially if you don't have your fats and your water content correct okay so my dears i'm going to leave you there make sure you get on the the wait list for homemade breads for busy parents this is an amazing opportunity for you whether you are just starting to learn how to make breads haven't ever even tried it yet. If you have tried in the past and you just could not be successful. Oh my gosh. So if you tried and tried and tried to be successful and you just couldn't get reach that success. Honey, this is your opportunity. Okay. This is, this is your opportunity to change all that. To take back control of your life. And start taking control of your actual independence this is just one step of many to being independent and self-sufficient and self-reliant on yourself and the the amazing lessons that you learn from baking homemade breads and watching it literally grow and come to life just like a baby and then afterwards being able to literally sink your teeth into all the yummy goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. It, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay. It is. All right. My dears, I will see you tomorrow. Come tomorrow. Ready to bake again. And if you haven't started baking home my bread yet. Go watch the master class, okay? Because I'm going to teach you so much in that master class. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Seriously, if you haven't watched it yet, go watch it. It's, it's amazing. It's awesome. And truly, if you haven't ever tried to bake bread and you've never been able to actually find success baking bread, go watch that master class. And literally pull out your your mixing bowl, pull out your flour, your yeast, all the goodies. Make sure you, you will have to snag the whole wheat honey oat bread recipe. The link is up in my bio. You can also get to it at bit.ly, so B-I-T dot L-Y slash whole wheat oat bread. All one word, all lowercase, okay? And that will take you directly to where you can get the recipe. So you can sign up for the recipe. Um, and seriously, grab the recipe, download it, save it, print it. You can keep it right on your phone and bake from your phone. Or you can, you know, print it off, put it in your own recipe book, you know. Put it in that little recipe binder of yours. And then click on that video. I do suggest watching it first, or at least part of it, because I'm going to give you a whole bunch of tips in that. So I actually want you to follow the recipe that I've written, not exactly the way that I'm making it, okay? With the exception of I did put an additional step in the master class versus what's in the recipe. So there is a, an additional little proof that I do in the master class that's not on that recipe. And so you can do it with or without that proof, okay? And it's not going to hurt your bread. The only thing it does is it changes the texture of your bread. So it will make your bread a little more fluffy it, um, versus as dense as it usually bakes up, okay? Either way, it's great. If you are on that time crunch, skip it. Just totally skip that, that proof 
and you're going to be good. You're going to be golden. So just put it straight into your pans instead of doing the, the, the middle proofing on it. Okay. So other than that, I will literally teach you how to bake homemade breads in that master class. And I will teach you why all of these problems are happening. So if you are struggling to find that success, that master class is going to teach you why those things are happening. I literally show you why they happen. Okay? So that you can actually start finding success. There's so much information in that master class that I literally could spend an hour just talking about it. And the master class isn't even an hour long. Okay? All right. My dears, I will see you live right here on our channels at 11 o'clock Mountain Central Time again tomorrow. Come ready to bake because I'm baking with you guys tomorrow. Ooh, ooh, who wants to bake? So if you are wanting to get in on that bake, my dear, go grab the whole wheat honey oatmeal bread recipe so that you can get it saved, downloaded, and printed. That way you can kick your phone on and I can show you how to bake. And you have your recipe sitting over here instead of having to like consistently, constantly be switching screens going, oh crap, how much was it out again? <laughs> All right. So come join me tomorrow and let's do some baking because tomorrow's Thursday. We got to do a bake. We need some bread. Yeah. We need to stop talking about bread and we need to actually have some. Okay. <laughs> All right. See you guys. And Stay tuned and catch the replay. So if you have any questions that you want to get caught up on, catch the replay. Do not forget to go check out all of our challenge days, okay? So you guys have access to all of these challenge days. All right, my dears? Okay. See you guys.